Hello everyone, how are you tonight? I'm Brandy with Brushed by Brandy. Um, go follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, I'm on YouTube and Pinterest as well. Um, and I'm here tonight with this piece that we've been working on start to finish. This is our fourth step and um, we're gonna finish it up tonight. So four videos of four, you can go back and watch it all the way from the beginning and see how we started this process and all the way to where we are tonight. So. Um, tonight, you guys, if you like my page at Brushed by Brandy, share this video, and we're going to be giving away an 8 ounce of Dixie Doll paint in this broadcast at the end to someone who's shared. <clears throat> my husband, Sean, is here if you guys have any questions. And um, so tonight, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about finishing up a piece. Oh, by the way, Dixie Doll has had some awesome lives today. I am following Andy of Andy's Chairs and Do Dodson. Um, and they had a great video tonight using building waxes. They were a lot of fun. So that's intimidating following Andy and Dew together. But um, thank you guys for coming and watching. So um, this piece here are the colors of our body we did in um, Yankee Blue is this dark color here. Um, our medium color was Vintage Duck Egg. And then it's got a highlight of Lemonade in the center. So you can see this is our color scheme that we used on this piece here. And then we've top coated it, um, you know, I'm done with my look. I'm choosing not to distress it. That's a personal choice. You can add that if you would like. You could have added glaze on here or anything that you like. But um, we are going to go through and kind of finish up the piece. So if you remember last week, I just hit our hardware with a coat of black spray paint. It's all dried now. It looks really good. Um, but it's, it's really plain. It needs something extra. So I'm going to hit it with some gilding waxes. So I've got out a bunch of my Dixie Belle gilding waxes here, and I was kind of curious what color you guys thought would look good against this. So I've got out some turquoise, teal, hammered copper I thought could be really pretty. Um, so I'm going to hit my, now that I've spray painted my hardware, I take a little bit of gilding wax. I'm gonna come up closer to the camera so you can see this. So I will take the gilding wax on my finger and then I will just take it and hit the high points of my hardware. So it just adds a highlight. Can you guys see that on camera? Yeah, bring it and like sit it still instead of continually yeah. moving. Sorry, I'm gonna get this one side and then hang on and then I'll show it. So you can see just by adding that little bit of gilding wax to one side, it just emphasizes the curves of the hardware against the plain black. So, you know, for example, you could use any of the, um, gilding waxes. If we wanted to choose silver as our accent, I can use silver. You can layer them. So I'll show you silver as an option. That's really pretty. I do like the silver. I think we might go with silver against the, um, the body colors on this. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of this. Thanks for letting me know, Jamie, trying to, uh, try something different. The focus and the lighting is Okay. Coming across okay. Yeah, we, we installed some new lights this evening. Or, um, well, my husband installed some new lights out here. So we're trying to get a more um, natural look in the lighting. It's easier to see. So that's the gilding wax on the hardware. Now I'm going to take these little rosettes that go along the side of it. And I'm going to do the same gilding wax around the edges of the rosette. And I just hit it with my finger ever so slightly because I just want to get those high points on there. I'll just turn it, you know, maybe a little bit on this, on the tip here. And it just took that plain black hardware and gave it a little something extra. So let me do one more piece and then we can install a handle. It doesn't have to be perfect. I want them to be a little bit aged looking. Um, but I really like that silver against the, the black hardware. So then I will take a drawer. This one's probably the easiest for me to reach. And if I slide that out, we can screw in a piece of hardware here. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of what you usually don't see on camera. And I'm going to show you what I do to the insides of a piece now. When I send a piece home with a customer, it's been done from the inside out. I try to think of every detail I can um, before I send a piece home with a customer. 
Now, once you put the silver on there, the wax, or do you seal it? Nope, I don't. Um, building wax will dry and it will harden on its own, um, and it creates a nice, tough seal on there. So once once it's dry, you'd have a hard time. I, I've just tried to distress gilding wax with um, steel wool. You'd have a hard time getting it off. So it dries well. It wears very well on hardware. So I'm just going to loosely get this on here so we can kind of see what it looks like. These drawers fit nice and snug, but that's really pretty. So then on this piece, I also wanted to take some of the same gilding wax and I want to highlight these leaf details that we have. I had a couple options for those. That's kind of hard to see against that color. I'm going to try this redesign with Prima Gilding Wax. This is Diamond Dust. I'm going to probably just try a couple and see what I like the best. How long does it take the wax to dry? Um, you know, it's pretty dry within a couple hours. It doesn't take long at all. I'm going to try a couple different colors. This is the silver. This is the diamond dust. They're both very pale. If I wanted something a little more impactful, this is redesigned with Prima Gilding Wax that I'm using here. The gold is really pretty, but if I use the gold, I would probably want to change that hardware. I kind of like the gold, guys. I got a little bit up here onto my clear coat, and I'm just going to clean it off with a rag. Um, I, I probably need to come back and get that with a little bit of mineral spirits because I got it up here where I didn't want it. I'll just take a Q-tip and mineral spirits and clean that off. I like the gold. So just to kind of recap, what colors did you use on this piece? So the body of the piece itself has Dixie Belle paint and um, Yankee Blue, Vintage Duck Egg, and Lemonade is our color scheme. I really like this gold gilding wax. I feel like it makes those stand out. And I can just come right over the silver on our hardware and I can change this right up. I'm going to zoom into this. It's actually kind of pretty with embroidery too. So I would come around here and I'm going to finish this piece out with some gold gilding wax on all of these. It's like a, you know, leaf detail here and I just think it's really pretty. Let me know if you guys can see the detail, the clarity in the picture zooming in like this. Um, with it up here, I would probably hit the frame of these drawers a little bit too just for a little bit of sparkle. And the thinner you let your gilding wax go on, see how some areas it's more saturated and then it just looks kind of worn. Um, I, I like that. So I don't try to make it even in all the spots. I literally just run my finger along and whatever's left is what's left. Now, how do you get the gilding wax off your fingers, off your skin? Um, it washes off with soap and water. So after I'm done here, I'll just go wash my Watch my finger and it'll come right off. I really like the gold against the, the blue. It's kind of regal looking. See how that just sets off the drawer frame? Thank you everyone for letting me know. Clarity is good. Good. Okay, we're trying out some new lighting tonight. My um, camera light can be a little blinding and it, it um, oversaturates the colors for you guys so you aren't seeing true colors. So we're trying some new lighting tonight. My husband is always really helpful about getting me what I need out here, and I did want to try some new lighting. So probably just up there, and then I think I just want to hit like the high points of this detail here, also with some of the, the gold. I like the gold against this blue. You know, it's, it's trial and error. We tried the silver at first. I didn't care for that as much, but I like how this gold looks. So um, it doesn't always happen the first time around. You just try what you think will work. I'll hit a little bit of this curve here. And maybe right there, just so it looks like it was gilded a million years ago, but has worn off since then. That's really pretty, really pretty. So I'm going to have to take these rosettes off to do this next handle. Okay, so that's kind of the outside of our piece. Once I finish all the gilding wax all the way across, I need to take this little spot off here where my finger touched. I'll just dip a Q-tip in some mineral spirits and that'll wipe right away. Um, but I wanted to show you what I do with the inside of a piece, too. Can okay. I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Uh, you see, like on the left, for instance, yes. how do you deal with the paint as the drawer rubs? How so, do you correct that? So this I would just touch up with some paint. It happens to be a pure color, so I will sand right here around this drawer. Um, I, I didn't know where the drawers were going to fit in, so I'll make sure it's nice and smooth where they reach. It's not uncommon to have to do touch-ups on a piece, so that's a spot that I will need to touch up. Um, if it's distressed, you can make it fit in with the look of your piece. 
So my drawers on this one fit nice and snug. This is the inside of my body. I have um, painted around my drawer edges here inside so you can't see any of the exposed wood. But when I do a piece, uh, this is wood drawer glaze. So let me show you. That's the interior piece and this is what's on the underside of the piece itself. So wood rubbing on wood over years and years and years, some of these pieces are old, um, can take its toll on wood. So I always wax my drawer glides and you can use a whole bunch of products. Everything I'm using tonight, there are alternatives to it, but I'm just gonna show you some options. Um, so for waxing drawer glides, you can get paraffin wax, comes in a block, usually in the candle making section of a craft store. Um, paraffin wax works. The only thing I don't like about it is it can, um, it can chip off of the block and leave residue in here, kind of little pieces of wax inside there. So um, beeswax is another option. Um, you can soften them too in the microwave, for example. You can use your Dixie Bell wax. Um, Dixie Bell wax is a nice wax though, so I hate wasting it on something as unpretty as inside the drawer glides. So what I actually use is this Minwax Paste Finishing Wax. It is hard as a rock, but it dries really well. So I will take this in an old wax brush. This is the same brush I use for this all the time, so I don't even bother cleaning it. And I'm gonna wax this side. And you can see here, it's starting to wax the wood next to it, but it adds a little bit of um, moisture into the wood and it gives something for the wood to glide against. It reduces the friction between the wood on wood. So I will do this to all my drawer glides inside of every piece, make sure I'm getting all the sides where the wood comes into contact with each other. This is the unglamorous stuff, you guys. I'm telling you, tonight I was like, man, it, it's not interesting, but this is probably the stuff you don't always see. And then I will wax here, my drawer glide on here. Make sure I'm getting all this wood. Thanks, Bo, for throwing that out. What? It's on point tonight. <laughs> Camera crew is making it Cameraman's happen. Cameraman's on point, yeah? Okay, good. The new lighting's in effect. We got the cameraman on point. Okay, so I got my drawer glides all waxed. I always make sure the insides of my drawer are nice and clean. I don't want to leave any residue in here. This has a little stuck on something. I'm just using a cleaning wipe. Whatever your cleaning product of preference is, I always clean the insides of my drawers really well, vacuum them out. And I do this last because while you're working on a piece, let's say I had to stress this at the end, it would still have dust inside of it. So I clean my drawers out last. Um, I wanna make sure the inside of my piece is all nice and clean, that I haven't left any dust and debris inside of there, any coins or rare jewels you might find inside of there. That never happens, guys. What are these, pirate pieces? Yeah. <laughs> Not this one, at least. I keep hoping, keep the hope alive. Okay, and then I also oil the insides of my drawers. So I gave you guys a few options for the wax that you can use on glides. Um, tonight I'm gonna use tongue oil, which is just a, you know, an oil that moisturizes the wood, but you can use a hemp oil. You can, you can wax the insides of your drawers if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> Hang on. The camera crews. The camera crew needs to take a break and open this for me. It's got these stupid proofs aside. It's child proof. Yeah, they don't want the kids getting into it, or me either. Oh, camera crew is struggling. Having some technical difficulties. <laughs> I do not recommend this product for this. I chose Tongue Oil because it's a readily available hardware store item that anybody could get. And it's a, it's a good wood moisturizer, so it penetrates the Good wood. thing you loosened that up for me. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, it doesn't smell good, you guys. It smells like chemicals, but it will moisturize your wood. So I use this on my drawer interior and my drawer sides. I'm going to come here. I don't want to set this on the ground. I'm going to moisturize the inside of my drawer and I just take it onto a rag. You could use a brush too. Um, and whatever product you choose to use, I just moisturize. This has some sort of coating on it. This piece right here might not be a good example because it's not pure raw wood. It does have a finish on it. 
Um, you know, like I said, hemp oil is a great option. Um, you can wax the insides. So tongue oil is just one option. Um, you can mix essential oils in with whatever product you use to give it a nice smell too. Yeah, yeah these drawers are a little... There, there you go. They fit tight. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So that goes in. I know my drawer glide is nice and waxed. My drawer interior is all oiled. Um, so I also will take felt pads and I stick these on the um, furniture feet for my customer because I never know where this is going to go. Um, but if it's going on to hardwood floors, I'm feeling here down to where the foot is on this piece and I stick furniture pads right on top of it. These are just the extra little finishing touches that you don't want to forget. This is what sets your piece apart from, you know, just slapping a coat of paint on, using quality products and finishing your piece. Okay, and then from there, kind of my last step is, um, I label all my pieces. And this is a personal choice that I like, but um, I will put a label onto my furniture. So these are my labels here. And what they are, this is a roll of paper labels that I got off of Amazon. And then I ordered a re-inking stamp from um, Vistaprint. So this was like $20, but it's a re-inking re stamp. And I stamped my own furniture labels. So I'll take this, stamp it, and I have, you know, a thread of them here pre-made. I take a label and I can stick this wherever I want. I usually put them in the upper corner of my bag. So I label my piece. Um, sometimes I will also, when I'm wiping on my clear coat, I'll wipe the clear coat over my label and kind of seal it in there too, just in case anyone ever thinks they're gonna take it off. So those are kind of our finishing touches. I'm gonna keep going here with this hardware because it's so pretty and I wanna get that done. So I'm gonna keep rubbing on the gilding wax onto our hardware. Cheryl says she spies green, so I gotta move the camera over this way. Oh, yeah, you guys can see that piece because I've already posted it. Can you see that? And Tish wants to see your label. Yeah, that, that one I did last week. I didn't show you guys on camera. So Dixie Bell challenged us to use, they gave us a list of six colors. Oh, I guess it's easier to see over here. There you go. They gave us a list of six colors to try to use all in one piece. And I, I was okay with the greens and blues and yellow, but you know what threw me off? The red. The red threw me off. So on this one, I kind of cheated and used it inside. That? And then on this stencil pattern here. This was done with the new stick and style stencils by Redesign with Prima. They're available on the Dixie Bell website. Um, I have my link posted it in this post. Um, but it's really cool because you can reuse them. And look how clean all these stencils are. I don't have any bleed through. And I just reuse the same pattern over and over again. Same stencil. It has adhesive on it, so you don't get the bleed through like you do with a traditional stencil. All right, so this one's for Judy. Can you turn that piece around that you're working on so they can see the back? Because okay, I also want to show the label. Okay, I don't paint the backs of my pieces. I've written a blog post on this. Um, unless I have reason to think that the back of my piece will be exposed, I'm going to lose my furniture. Right? All right, here, I'll move. Sorry, guys. It's falling off the wheels, you guys. Wheels are falling off. Yeah, they don't work that, that great. Drive it till the wheels fall off. That's what you always say about me, right? Yep. So this one, the back is not unattractive at all. Um, you guys get that? Some of them can be pretty rustic, but I don't paint the back of my pieces unless I have reason to think it will be exposed. Um, and that's for a bunch of reasons. Um, now we got to get it back. Yeah, it's on the front left. So I'm not yeah. going to move this anymore because it's going to want to fall and I'll fix it when we get on the camera. Um, and I don't paint the backs of pieces because here, I, I, I put my top three reasons on my blog post on my website at Brush by Brandy. You can read the full thing. But my top three reasons were um, most furniture manufacturers do not finish the backs of their pieces. Go look at the backs of the furniture in your home. Most of them do not have finished backs. Um, Another reason is because some of them have markings on them that indicate the age or the maker or um, you know where it's traveled to over its life, and I don't want to cover that up. That's part of the story of the piece. Um, and number three was, was the third reason was nobody sees it. 
nobody sees the back of your piece. So, um, no, unless I need to, a customer requests it, or it's a piece that I know is going to be, you know, a table in the center of a room or something, I don't worry about that. So, I mean, I put a lot of details into my piece, and I just don't think that one is something that's necessary. I've never, ever, ever had a customer question that either. Never. Nobody has ever asked me, why isn't the back painted? So all of our hardware is kind of done, so I'll stick this on. Just really quick to recap, your sticker. Yes. Where do you get your sticker and your restamping stamp? So the um, labels are just paper labels. You can get any color, um, you know, white, blue, whatever you want your logo to be on. I thought these... Um, they are um, kind of brown paper labels were cute. Let's zoom in so people can see that. They're just brown paper labels in a roll. You get a roll of like 250 of them off Amazon for, I don't remember, $12 maybe, $6. I don't know what it costs. But you just buy a roll of plain paper labels. Make sure that the face is the same size as your stamp. You'll know what size your stamp is when you order your stamp. Susan but, says she wishes we were her neighbors. Oh, no, Probably no. not. No. No, our neighbors we're up thought we were a all the time. Crazy. We're project people, so they, I don't know, we just go and go and go and go. We have three kids, like we're just a really busy family, so no, you don't. Um, so that was kind of it for tonight. I mean, I can keep going, but but those are the finishing touches I wanted to show you. I'm going to go through all this piece. I'm going to finish all my gilding wax. I'll put all my hardware on. I want to oil all three glides, oil all three drawer boxes. Um I've got my label on and this piece is ready to go. It's ready to photograph, but those finishing touches are not something you want to skimp on. Um, I think this start to finish series kind of showed you guys so much more goes into a piece than just paint, you know, from prep to paint, to top coat, to accents, to finishing the interiors. There's so much besides the coat of paint was just one step, one step. We did two coats of paint. Um, but there's so many more steps that go into finishing a furniture piece. Um, so I hope that was helpful to see some of the stuff you don't always see on camera. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions, but I'm gonna come on tonight and I'm gonna choose a winner. Um, you know, one thing I will say about the tongue oil as an option for inside the drawer, I do prefer a hemp oil. Um, this does have a chemical -y smell that I don't care for. If I'm handing over a piece, I'd rather have something that's got a really fresh, clean smell. Um, and I'm smelling a chemical smell off of that. So I don't know if that's necessarily the best product, but it does really moisturize wood. So maybe give it some breathing time if that's going to be your choice. All right. Pick a winner for an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint and the choice of your choice of color. Is all my work from clients? That's a good question. Cheryl, hang on and I'll talk about that. Okay, I have a winner for tonight. My winner is Charlotte Amato. Charlotte Amato. Charlotte, if you're on tonight, congratulations. Message me on my page at Brush by Brandy and I'll get your shipping information to get you out um, your choice of eight ounce paint. Um, is all my work from clients. Sometimes I do a piece for myself. Sometimes I get a piece for my own home. Um, you guys, as, as my business has grown, I feel very fortunate that I have um, a following and um, most of my clients are come, come from word of mouth or my social media pages and I get orders where people will come to me and say, I want a dresser. It needs to be 60 inches long and I'll show them. I keep a stockpile of furniture. I pick up things as I see them. Um, I'll show them what I have in stock, and then they'll say, I was thinking of blue. We'll exchange some photos of blue furniture, what they found on Pinterest, what I've done before, um, what their room looks like, things like that. And we really design a piece together. So it's kind of a fun process. Um, I prefer to at least get some kind of idea from the customer what they're looking for. But then on occasion, I do have time in between orders and pieces like this. Like Dixieville asked for something in these colors. Um, and so I did it and you know, I'll do pieces for my own house. If I'm slow on orders, there are definitely slow times of the year. Um, or for example, when we moved to the new house, I stopped taking orders cause I didn't know what my calendar was going to look like. And then I just did my own thing and I made a few pieces on my own and put them out for sale. So I don't always, I don't very often get things out for sale. Um, so if you're waiting on a piece from me, the best way to, is to contact me. 
And um, do you ship? And I do offer shipping nationwide. Yes, I do. Um, shipping can be pricey. People ask me about shipping all the time. I don't have any good tips for shipping. I'm trying to make shipping contacts locally. I'm in California, so you know sometimes people will ask for shipping across the country. It can cost you know six hundred to a thousand dollars to ship things across the country, depending on the size of the piece. So, um, no, it's not something that I do a lot because it can be so pricey, but yeah, I do offer it. So, um, so I hope that was helpful to kind of hear that aspect of it too. Um, Charlotte Amato messaged me on my page. I'm going to let you guys go with a short one tonight. Oh, you know what else I want to know? Please give me feedback, you guys, on if you like the start to finish process on this, or do you prefer to just do something different every week? Do you like to see it go through the entire process? Um, you know, every piece is a little bit different. This one I didn't add distressing to. I left it fairly clean, but maybe next time we add distressing or we use patina paint or something, you know, every look comes together a little bit differently. I thought this one looks better with no distressing. Um, so we can do a different process, a different look, but do you like seeing those, the processes layered together and how a piece comes together start to finish? Or do you prefer just the little snippets on pieces here and there? I'd like that feedback. That would be helpful for me, whether you want to do this again or something different next month. I'm also going to be live next month on Thursdays on the Dixie Belle page. Um, I've kind of claimed this as my night. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, but your guys' feedback tells me what, what you want to learn on here. So. Um, well, so far it's the start to finish. You guys like the start to finish. Okay. I always get worried that you guys are going to get bored by like, oh, the top coat's not very exciting. What we're doing tonight isn't very exciting. Oiling drawers, oiling drawer glides, it's not exciting, but I do that to every single piece. That's the stuff you don't see. Um, so, okay, we'll pick a totally different look next month. I was thinking maybe something with patina paint next month and do that from start to finish. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight, and I will talk to you guys next Thursday.